Okay, I'm going to be solving some more problems here on chess.com. Uh, been kind of near the 2600 mark. Uh, of course, I've been above it, as you can see. But uh, I think it takes a little focus and consistency. So uh, over the next few weeks, I'm going to probably try to put up one uh, session each week. Uh, let me know what you think about that. I'm going to try to explain my thoughts and hopefully have uh, some instructive uh, solving session sessions here. So let's get started. Okay, uh, let's take a look at this first problem. It is white to move. And here, um, it looks like uh, we are trying to draw because uh, black has these two, um, black has these two pawns uh, on the E file. Uh, the king is coming here and we are in check. So first thing I want to take a look at is what happens if I take with the uh, king, with king takes a7, uh, king might go here, let's see, to f3, and then what happens if we play Bishop to e1 makes sense to me, keeping the king out of um, keeping the king out of f2. So it would take the if king takes a7, king to f3, bishop to e1, king to g2, then we get the king back, king to b6, to f1, um, king to c5, and then it looks like after king takes e1, king to d4, and king to d1, we're just going to queen the uh, promote the e pawn, the first e pawn. So we have to look for something else. Um, let's see here. King takes a seven. King to f three. Bishop to e1, to g2, king to b6, king to f1, and then we can play uh, something like, let's say, bishop to h4, then, I don't think we're too far away. Um, Problem here is that let's see, e1, queen, then bishop takes e1, king takes e1, king to c5, then the other e pawn still promotes. So I feel like I'm missing something here. Well, let's try. I, I, is there any reason we would? We, I mean, we're in check here, so we need to do something. King takes a seven. King to f three seems like the natural move. Is there any? Maybe we don't play bishop to e one. Uh, we just play king to b six. Then king to f two. King to c five. E1 equals queen. Bishop takes E1. King takes E1. And then king to D4 gets there in time. So if we go back a move, are there any moves that help the situation here? Can So if the king's on F2, 
this let's see uh king takes a7 king to f3 um king to b6 king to f2 c5 and then what if we played e3 instead then king to d4 and then i still think it i think we still win here because or not we draw here because um e1 equals queen check bishop takes e1 king king takes e1 then king takes e3 is uh a draw so i think king takes a7 is our first move okay so far so good and then b6 five okay now here i still think i just go king to d4 because there's no way can you do anything king to d4 i mean if he tries to wait with king to king to f3 then i can just play something like bishop to e1 so this should draw and that's right okay so 2300 rated problem uh gained a couple points uh maybe it took a little longer than i should have but that's okay okay let's go to the next problem okay here it's white to play um material is even and let's see here um first thing i notice here is we have uh this bishop is under threat by this knight this bishop's under threat by the rook uh, got some back rank action happening here um so two thoughts i had can i just take this bishop so rook takes c3 because if rook takes c3 then we have rook to a8 check king to g7 then bishop to d4 check then let's say um if something like if something like knight to um If something like um, knight to f6, then I can just take the rook here on c3 with bishop takes c3, and I'm attacking this rook, and I believe I'm a piece ahead. So bishop takes c3, uh, or sorry, rook takes c3. Now the other, we have to check the uh, possible checks here. If try something like, I don't think it works. Um, if he ignores this just plays knight takes e3 then i just take with the rook and i'm again i'm ahead of peace uh can you do anything else in terms of threatening me well the other issue is even with that if he plays rook rook c to c2 he's got he still can't i don't believe he can mate me here because this knight would be covering um these squares and i can always trade give some material back i suppose so i think that oh no it, it does let's see Oh, it does work because if rook takes e3, knight takes e3, I just play rook takes c8 check. And then um, 
after King to uh, for example, after King to G7, I could play something like H3 and get my King to safety. Actually, my King's not really in danger at that point with only one Rook and Knight here. Um, there's no uh, Arabian mate this particular position. So Rook takes C3. Um, if Rook takes G2 check, is there anything? Uh, King takes D2. Uh, Rook takes C3. And I still have Rook to A8 check, King to G7, Bishop to D4 check. So I think the solution here is Bishop, Rook takes C3. Uh, one other thought I had, though, was something like bishop to d4, and then if bishop takes d4, rook takes c8 check, but that only wins, that really only wins the exchange. Um, so I don't think that is the... Oh, in fact, that doesn't work because bishop takes d4 comes with check, so that would be wrong. Okay, so I think it's rook takes c3. Let's try it. Okay, take c3. Rook to a8 check, and then bishop to d4 check, and I believe that this should work. Bishop takes bishop takes c3, rook to b1 check, then I have knight to f1, and then if knight to d3 attacking this knight again, I have rook to a1. I think I'm okay. Okay. And okay. A little bit of a harder problem. I had to make sure that I wasn't going to get checkmated. Um, but as you can see there, uh, we're able to defend. So um, this problem was rated 2684. So a little bit harder. And luckily we were able to see it. Okay. Let's go on to the next problem. Okay, well, it looks like we have the material is about even, and it's like we have a pinned bishop here. Uh, what threats do we have? This um, pawn is hanging here with we'll check with this queen, perhaps. Um, that seems to be the main threat, and I guess it's a question of whether I can I do anything here to maybe win some material. So, this Rook is hanging. Um, for a moment. Uh, but something like queen to b5, threatening this rook, as well as uh, maybe a check here. Is there anything where I could hit him with this check first? Is there anything there that would be effective? Rook to e8 check. Um, Always want to check to see if there's any knight maneuvers that would be helpful. So if I do nothing, queen to d4 check wins a pawn, and maybe this knight. That wouldn't be good. Um, Back something like queen to b3 or queen to b5 falls to that. So need to do something a little more forcing, maybe. So what I see here, uh, I do see this um, queen to d6 check, and if say king, let's say so king to g7 or King to g8. Uh, if king to g7, I have a follow up from there. Um, let's see here. Do we have anything with rook to e8? Um, doesn't look. Actually, it could, that could be fairly dangerous. Say queen takes d3, then we have 
queen to then we would have something like queen to um, f8 check and then the king would pretty much have to go to f6 then we have queen to h8 check and then the king would be forced to f5 king to f5 and then we have um, let's see here from that position something like I would say queen to queen to e5 check, king to g g4, and then there's a remate from there, because the, that this part might be the trickier part. That's what I would want to see here is some type of uh, mate, but I don't think that quite forces it. But maybe I'm missing something along the way. Queen to d6 check, king to g7, uh, rook to e8, and I'm not worried about any checks here because uh, my king's covering f3. Oh, I do have to be worried uh, because of h3 check, or do I have to be worried? King to g1, my knight is covering the c1 square, so there's no mate along, uh, no mate there, necessarily. So queen to d6 check, king to g7, Rook to e8, queen to h3 check, king to g1. Uh, let's see here. No mates from the queen, no safe mates from the queen anymore. Uh, rook to c1 would be covered by knight, take c1. But then, uh, do we have any type of force mate here? That's another question. So let's say he doesn't, um, say, makes a move like, Well, could make a move like rook takes h4, threatening to checkmate me on h1. So that would force me to make some moves. And so, let's see, at that point, we have. Well, we actually have queen to e5 check. And then, if queen to f6, then. Queen to e7, I believe, is mate. And then if king to h7, then queen to h8 is mate. So actually, that's pretty deadly. Queen to d6 check, king to g7, rook to e8. And then uh, there are, you know, queen to h3 check would be the most dangerous. Or if queen takes d3, for example, then uh, we would have... Um, queen to e5 check and then again that sequence that we talked about um, queen to d6 check king to now it's I think easier if we play if he plays queen to um, g8 because then I have rook d8 with check then no matter where he goes uh, well actually if he goes to h7 at that point no he would uh, Went to h7, then queen to f8 would not come with check. But again, I think my opponent only has, uh, but can doesn't have enough safe checks here. I think that should win. King to d8, d6 check, king to g7, rook to e8, and uh, now black can try to protect with something like check this square here but the problem is then uh, let's say he just makes a move like um, the bishop to d7 attacking the rook then i have queen to f8 check king to f6 and then the problem there is that queen to h8 check and then um, this queen is actually blocking so i think queen to d6 check is the answer um, okay, now rook to e8, I believe, is the next move. I'm just going to play it. 
Okay, so here uh, he's going to give up the queen for the rook, which could be the solution because we saw already what happens if, if uh, black doesn't do that. Okay, so that was actually a 2659 rated problem, so we gained five points. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, so we've got uh, a little pressure coming down on the D file. Let's look at the material. Material looks to be about even. Two uh, minor pieces, two rooks and queens, and white does have, um, looks like two more pawns. Those I don't think are very consequential here. So the first thing that kind of comes to mind here is this pressure here on the king. Um, it looks like all of the squares around uh, black's king seem to be covered okay at the moment, but uh, it wondering if we can force something here. Let's see. This bishop is pinned at the moment. I'm actually thinking to myself, what if um, queen to g4 with the threat of bishop takes g2? Uh, that seems plausible, but a lot to figure out. And then there's also the threat of rook to d8. So that some thought there. I think rook takes g2 check immediately just he gets hit by rook takes g2 and then if bishop takes g2 king takes g2 and then this queen gets a check in but I think can the king just run over here to the uh Well, actually, okay, this is interesting. Uh, rook takes g2 check, rook takes g2, bishop takes g2, and here, what is black? If the king takes, then queen to g4 check, let's say king to f1. Then we have rook to d8, and this queen gets skewered along with the rook. So the natural response would be queen takes d8 check, and then knight takes d8, and then I don't think there's any follow-ups there. I guess the question is, is that any different than, say, bishop takes g2? So there are a couple of moves here. You know, bishop takes g2 also is um, fairly effective there, too. Uh, in fact, maybe more effective because the king cannot move. It's not in check, but see, because rook takes g2 check, then I would have to contend with uh, something like king to g1. But then that should just win me a piece with rook takes f2. So I have to see if one of those two makes sense. So bishop takes g2, and the natural move there is rook. Because the threat there is bishop takes e4 check, which would... Um, Bishop takes e4 check, which discovers an attack with a discovered check, and then I would win the queen. It looks to me like the only immediate checks that white has are with the queen, so I, I, it's less forcing, or, you know, and, and it looks like all these squares, d7, d8, um, of course, d4, 
d6 is, uh, or e6 is covered by the queen and this pawn. Um, so I think bishop takes g2 is good. Now, rook takes g2, I have to make sure to check if there, is there some type of reputation here? Rook takes g2, check, and king to h1 maybe isn't, just isn't as good. Because the idea may be that um, rook takes g2, check, king to h1 wins a piece. Uh, rook takes d2 or f2, then bishop takes f2, wins a piece, but why isn't that as effective? Usually there's a reason. Uh, just want to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Because right now I'm leaning towards bishop takes g2. I know only one of them can be right, and sometimes the answers are a little bit complicated. Well, let's see. Bishop takes g2, can see queen takes f7 check, king takes f7, rook takes f6 check, but then am I safe if I just go so what if I just go king to, well if I go king to e7 and he's got bishop to F5 or C5 check, king to E8, but then again, I still don't see a follow up because the E6 square is covered by the queen and bishop still. Uh, the F8 square is covered by this rook, so that type of thing would not necessarily work. So bishop takes G2, then rook takes F6, threatening mate here. But then I still have, I think I still have bishop takes e4 check, which still should win the queen. So, not sure about this. Let's see. So my main line here is bishop takes g2, rook takes g2, because I don't think any of this works. Well, this, I feel like I need to check this for some reason. Bishop takes g2. Bishop takes g2, rook takes g2, I think it has to be rook takes g2, rook takes g2, check, king takes g2, because it doesn't really make sense by anything else. If he does not take the rook, then I can just retreat the rook, and then I'm up a rook. At least that's the way it seems. Um, rook takes g2, check, rook takes g2, rook takes g2, king takes g2, queen to g4, check. Then from there, let's say king to f1. Then I have, I believe, a winning combination with rook to d6. Rook to d8. Then I should have, that should be winning for me, I think. Then I would have... Uh, a rook and a bishop, it's a knight and a queen, and white has a couple extra pawns. So, not sure though, I, I haven't found a refutation though for rook takes two. So, it's one of these two as the first move. So, let's try this. Okay, so far so good. 
take. Take here, or I'm gonna check here. And that is the solution. So uh, maybe I will analyze later the consequence of rook takes d2 uh, as the first move and see if there's a problem. So this problem was rated 2502. And let's go on to our last problem. Okay, guys, here's some uh, post-mortem analysis of this problem. Uh, pretty straightforward. And the main question here is, as you saw, the solution here is bishop takes, and then after rook takes, rook takes, king takes, then we have this queen to g4 check. And after the king moves, then rook to d8 wins a lot of material. And while I was solving the problem, I had the question, uh, why can't I just play rook to g2 check? And, and I felt that it was just a little too complicated after this. But actually, this is fine too. I just win material there, and that should be fine. But there's actually a more specific reason, a more tactical reason why it doesn't work here. Rook takes, rook takes, bishop takes. And now, instead of this king takes g2, which is what I calculated during the game, white can play uh, this move here e6, cutting off the uh, path here of the queen, okay? So, and if we try to retreat the bishop, say, to h3, then e takes f7 check is pretty deadly here. Uh, of course, if we go here, then bishop to c5 is checkmate, and if we go to f8, then... Uh, we still have a lot of trouble here. This check, king to e7, and then, um, for example, here, and we're just winning material, okay? Or uh, white is winning material. So uh, that is why, go back here, that is why the solution is only bishop takes g2, not uh, rook takes g2 check. Okay, let's go back to the problems. Okay. So, uh, let's see, look at the material. It looks like uh, material is about even, but white, white has an extra pawn, it looks like. Now, it looks pretty straightforward to me. Does white have any threats? We're strengthening the rook. What I'm seeing here is simply rook to h2 check, then if the king moves, then I win this knight. Now, it would appear that makes a lot of sense, but sometimes, uh, you know, there might be a better solution. Actually, there's a lot of things going on here, because this pawn is hanging, and I'm probably trying to find the most efficient solution here. Let's do this. So let's look at these checks here. Bishop to... Let's look at knight to g3 check. I went upon... Oh, let's see. Rook. Actually, let's go back here. Rook to h2 check. Now, if the king goes to. If the king goes to. Um, say f3. Then rook to f2 check forces king to. e3. And I think simply rook rook takes e2 wins a piece. Um, now after that, though, let's check here because the only thing I see here is g4 with an attack on this bishop, and then it 
the bishop takes it, of course, now this knight would be hanging. So we have to be careful of that. Um, so actually, if rook... Actually, rook to h2 check, king to f3, knight takes d2 check, king to d3, then... Uh, I don't know if there's any mate per se, but definitely looks uh, winning at this point for me. Because then even here I could play knight takes. Well, maybe not. Knight takes uh, g3 here. Of course, after rook takes, then it gets a little more complicated. But Or rook to uh, b1. But it looks pretty straightforward that rook to h2 check just wins a piece, maybe more. Always checking here, am I missing some type of mate in two here? That's always the question, too. But I think... I think that should be... Pretty straightforward. So I'm going to play rook to h2 check. Okay, now the king comes to e3. I haven't really looked at here. And... So if rook to... So rook takes d2. I can play knight takes d2. Oh, but then the problem with knight takes is... Oh, no. I was going to say the rook problem with knight takes is that rook to c2 pins it, but then you can simply play. Oh, well, but then my bishop's covering c2. Now there's decision here. Now rook takes. There's got to be some type of problem with. Well, there might be some type of problem with that. G4. Then bishop to h7 should be okay. Oh, and then rook to h1, attacking the bishop again. So I think that's the reason why I need to take with the knight. Okay, so a couple things to look at there. Uh, why don't we analyze those? But uh, we got all five today, 2596, getting close to that 2600 mark. And I uh, hope you uh, found the problems along with Okay, uh, if we take a look at this problem, uh, I did see uh, the solution here as well. And we saw that after rook to h2 check, King to e2, or I'm sorry, king to e3, we can win this knight here. And I question whether we should take with the rook or with the knight. And after some calculation, uh, we saw that taking uh, with the knight was best. But I wanted to show you, just because I was saying the analysis, but I'm not sure if you all caught that, taking with the rook... Rook takes d2, looks like it wins a knight, but after g4, uh, if, of course, if we go here, then the knight will take, and then this, this knight will be hanging. Uh, and if we go to h7, then rook to h1, as I mentioned a couple minutes ago, uh, threatens as well. And here, uh, best play for uh, black would be to play rook to c2, keeping that rook safe. And then after rook takes h7, knight to d6. And this game is uh, even at this point. Um, oh. And white's, you can see here, white's pieces are very active as well. So it's definitely uh, not a great move or not a great um, 
not the optimal position after uh, winning that piece. And if we just go back here, and that is why after rook take uh, rook to h2 check, king to e3, we must take uh, with the knight. Taking with the uh, rook would be a blunder. Hey guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you tried to solve the problems with me. And uh, we had a couple tough problems. And uh, the key here, I think, is not just getting the solution, but as you could see from some of my analysis that was fairly deep, uh, sometimes you're given a choice between two seemingly equal um, options, and you have to make sure that you're calculating accurately and looking for your opponent's counterplay to see which one is correct. Uh, because in these types of problems, there is only one correct solution. Of course, uh, when you're playing in your games, that is not often the case. But when you have the time, it's important to try to find the best move, uh, not just um, not just make uh, superficial moves uh, based on thinking that things are the same because you didn't do the extra analysis. So in any case, uh, let me know what you thought in the comments, of course, and I will see you next time.